Hey everybody, how you doing today? Mark here in my backyard because today I want to show you our Forest River Wolf Pup 16 PF Black Label Edition Travel Trailer. Oh, that's a mouthful. <laughs> Okay, the first thing I want to go through is to tell you that the box itself is like uh, 19 feet long, but from the tip of the hitch to the back bumper, it's 22 feet, four inches. I believe that's right. 22, four, 22, six, something like that. The vehicle weight itself is 3,200 pounds. Again, I'm not sure exactly. I'll write it down here. I'll get it off the website and make sure I'm right. But the big seller for me is that the gross vehicle weight is around 5,000 pounds. In fact, it's like 4,999 pounds, which is awesome because I'm going to be towing this with my 2011 Jeep Grand Cherokee. It's only got a six cylinder to it. So my gross towing capacity is 5,000 pounds. Ta-da! 5,000 pounds. But the 5,000 pounds for the trailer is if everything is full up. So if my fresh water is completely full, if my black water is completely full, if my gray water is completely full, and then it's fully stocked with all of our other camping gear to be, I think it's around 800 pounds of other gear we can still have in this to get to that 5,000 pound limit, my truck should still be able to pull this thing. Not great, mind you, not great. You know, I would have to be very careful and stuff like that. All right, so now what I wanna do though is I just wanna go around and I wanna show you a couple of things that are uh, included in this camper. This is a black label edition. So all these cool graphics that you see down the sides and on the front and everything like that, that's part of it. Um, we also have a few um, perks inside the camper as well. So I'll, po I'll point those out as far as what would be included in the black label edition, okay? All right, the first thing that our trailer has, and I believe it's because it is a black label edition, is we actually have an electric powered um, hitch uh, level, whatever you want to call it, hitch winch. <laughs> So yeah, it runs off of our battery, which is right back here. And it is a deep cycle marine uh, battery. So it will last a very long time. So it's got a switch up here on the top and that turns on a little light under here. I know you guys aren't gonna see it in this bright sun, but uh, if I'm at camp and setting up and it's dark, I got a little light. And then the bottom button down here, this actually controls the winch. So I can go down, I can bring it up, okay? Nice and easy, nice and easy. It does have a seven point hookup here and it also comes with one full propane tank. All right, so up front here, we have a storage compartment. And what I like about the storage compartment is this right here and this right here, these are both magnets. So you just flip it up and boom, it just sticks. There's no futzing with a little latch or a little chain or anything like that. That's one thing that's really great and it's a magnet, so it should not fail. Now, the downside to this compartment is that it does not go all the way through, okay? Right along the back is a little wall and beyond that wall is your water heater, okay? So unfortunately, you cannot access on both sides of the trailer, but that is still a pretty good size storage area. All right, so inside your storage area, you'll notice this little module right here, okay? And what that does is that actually monitors your solar power. Yeah, this thing's got solar. So yeah, up on the roof up there is a single solar panel. Now, I wanna let you know, the solar panel is not there 
to constantly feed power to your battery so you're always having power to the unit. It's basically more of a trickle charger, a maintenance charger, okay? It will charge your battery as you're using it, which will make it last a lot longer when you're out on trips, but it is not meant to keep it fully charged while you're out, okay? All right, as we're still talking about the roof in a way, right along here, as you can see, going all the way across, and then down here, this is a awning. It is 12 feet long and it comes out a good long distance, okay? And what I like about it too is that it does not require sure power to operate, meaning that I don't have to have it plugged into an electrical outlet for that awning to be retracted and extended out, okay? It runs off the battery. That's awesome, I love that. Okay, the next thing I wanna talk about are the windows and doors. This is our kitchen window here. This is the side door or the side window here and the door frame here. Now what you'll notice is there's no sill around here, okay? So I'm sticking my hand up in there and there's no exterior sill around there, which is great. It seals up better than a traditional window sill type window. But the bad thing is, is that this is as far out as it goes. I mean, you're only talking maybe three to four inches at the bottom and that's all the farther it opens. Okay, right below our kitchen window, you'll see this little door here. And inside this door is what Forest River calls a outdoor kitchenette. And that's it. <laughs> I don't know how they call this a kitchenette. It's only a small little apartment or dorm style refrigerator which is great you know you can load up your sodas your beers wine coolers whatever you want to have access immediately to instead of going in the camper running down to the main refrigerator and grabbing something out of there so this is a, a nice little feature but i can't really consider this whole thing to be a kitchenette and then for the door here you got an assist handle that pulls out, so you got a nice firm uh, grip here. I've seen a lot of units where they just have a small little built-in handle right there, but that's nice. I mean, that comes out a good, uh, probably about 10 inches. Then of course the door opens up nice and easily, and it's got a screen door attached. And uh, this is our steps. And when we get to the campsite, you uh, pull on this blue, latch here to bring the steps down and what you want to do is you actually drop it all the way to where the sill plate here on the step is completely on the camper all right then the, all you gotta do is push it on this little metal trigger right here and you slide the legs down until it hits the ground holding the leg you pull up on the ladder until it clicks and then you do the same thing for the other side pushing the trigger bring it down, pick up the ladder until it clicks. Oh, I have to readjust this one. Okay, so there we go. That is nice and secure. That's the main thing about dropping down your ladder is to make sure that it's always tight up against the sill frame right here so that when you go to close your door, your seal and everything along the bottom will actually close tight in the way it needs to be. All right, these are the tires that you get with these. These are uh, a radial ST226, and these are a six bolt pattern. And I believe these are bigger on the Black Series edition as compared to the standard uh, series. But uh, another thing I wanna show you while we're down here, look at all that nice undercoating that are that's on all the beams, around the floor, everything. It's in the wheel wells, all the way back. It's got that nice undercoat ceiling. That's awesome. Okay, the next thing I wanna show you on the outside here, this big black thing right here is the uh, hood exhaust vent for your kitchen inside. Here, under this little uh, cover, that is a um, antenna plug. So yes, this does come with an antenna 
on the trailer. It's up above on the other side. You have two outlets, a, a dual plug outlet right here, and these are GFCI uh, plugs. However, this plug here does not have the reset button. That is actually inside by the kitchen. These are speakers here, so we can listen to music, whatever. This right here is a PAW TV mount. You'd put a, uh, the adapter for it on the TV and it actually just slides right in. And that is it, that's a leech, leash latch. So yep, I can take Missy along, clip her yard lead onto that, and that way she stays within range of our camper. That little leash latch thing down there, that was a big selling point for me, it really was. Okay, moving on to the back of the camper now, we got body lights up along the top, got a big huge brake light right here, full size spare tire, and yes, double check the lug pattern on your spare tire. Um, a buddy of mine said that uh, his sister-in-law, I think it was, bought a camper, had a blown out tire, went to go put the spare on, and it was a five lug pattern and they needed a six. So yes, I pulled that cover off and I've already double checked. It is a six lug pattern. So yeah, make sure you guys do that. Okay, but one of the other things I wanna point out on the back here is this little unit right here. That is a reverse camera. So yes, you can actually pair it to your phone through the Control One app and you can actually get a view of what's behind you. So that was another big seller. Okay, as you can see, this unit here has a nice big slide out and actually this is the dinette area. So yeah, it's uh, three benches that form like a horseshoe shape with a nice big table in the middle. And that's what that is, is our dinette area. But what I wanted to show you back here was more of this. One, here's a nice little uh, um, outside light again if I'm hooking up in the dark or something like that. I got a little light right here. This is a full shower. It's got the, uh, a shower sprayer, hose, and it's also got hot and cold water to it. And then down here is where I'll hook up to our shore power. Now, if you don't know what shore power is, it's basically whenever you go to a campsite that has an electrical outlet to it, okay? One of those little tower things that has the outlets where you plug your trailer in. Those are called shore powers, or a lot of people just call them uh, power outlets or power towers or something like that. But that is a shore power, okay? They are uh, um, 120 volt. There are also many different amperages. You can get 50 amp, 30 amp, 15 amp, 10 amp, okay? Our camper is a 30 amp camper. So I, gotta, I wanna make sure that whenever we're going out, the campsites I get have a 30 amp service or 50 because I do have an electrical um, adapter that I will plug into the power tower that will drop the 50 amps down to 30 and then it will feed into my camper from there. Okay, the other thing I wanna show you guys is that the windows, the frameless windows are still out on this side. This one opens up a little bit farther because it is an emergency exit. So inside there's a little red uh, pull thing and I just have to push it all the way out and this window will actually come all the way open. But again, that's just for emergencies. Right now this is fully open. It's maybe four or five inches. And then the dinette um, area still has the same windows. They only open maybe four inches or so. But the other things I wanna show you on this side here are my water connections. I can have city water, which means pressurized water. So if I've got an actual spigot on my campsite, I can run a hose from that spigot to my trailer. I've heard that if people do that, make sure that you get a pressure regulator and attach it to either the spigot or on the trailer itself so you don't blow out your water lines inside your trailer because sometimes the pressure in those spigots are just more than what your water lines can handle. But then I also have a fresh water um, inlet right here and that goes into our fresh water tank. And then right here inside this little black door, that is our water heater. 
and all the controls for this are actually inside the uh, main cabin. All right, let's go inside and let me show you around inside the camper now. All right, everybody. Close that door. Okay, now it is kind of dark in here right now. And uh, where's some more? There's another one above your camera here. Another one underneath the dinette. Okay, so this is the front of the trailer right here. And this is the bed. And it is a Murphy style bed. Let me show you. Okay, so right now, this is couch mode. So we can sit here. Um, I think you might be able to see it on the screen, that black thing up on the wall. That is a TV mount. And it swivels around so we can watch TV here in bed. We can watch TV sitting at the dinette. So this is a nice little place to go. But what do we do when we're ready to sleep? It actually converts very easily. These are all of our bed sheets. We'll take that, throw it down there, take this one and throw it down on this side. Pick up the front of the couch like that and it lays flat. And then we'll take the mattress and just flip the mattress over and there's our bed. Now this is this is a queen size bed, but it is a short queen. So if you're buying your sheets for this bed, make sure you get a short queen bed sheet set, okay? But uh, comes with this nice little cover thing. I mean, it's nice, but I don't know how much I'd really want to use it. Comes with two bed pillows and this little throw pillow which again, I'm not sure if I like, it's got this furry stuff on it. Eh, whatever. Okay, got hanging clo clothes cabinet here. So there's a rod up there. And then of course you can throw things on the bottom as well. You can even uh, get additional um, shelves and uh, make a little shelving unit in there and separate the layers of clothing that way. And of course there's one on this side as well. And then there's, of course, overhead cabinets here. Now, you cannot access through this little panel here, but through this door, you can reach all the way back there. And these overhead lights. Now, if I press and hold it, nice bright light right there. And it's kind of a spotlight. So if you're like reading in bed or something like that, you can have the light shining straight down on you. It doesn't really uh, give a lot of ambient light all around. A little, but not much. Then if you want more of a mood lighting, just give it a quick click. And then believe it or not, you, that's blue. <laughs> and then of course, to fold the bed up and get your couch back, just pick up the foot of it, foot of the bed. Pick up the bottom front of the couch and grab the back of the couch and bring it up. A little tight with the mattress there, but it works. Then you just put the uh, side arms on. This little tab right here, it's just soft. There's no rigid plastic. Just kind of slides down between the couch cushion and the side wall right there and then you have your armrest. Okay, underneath the sofa, if you just pick up the front, you have access to storage down there. It does not go all the way to the, uh, the outside access on the front of the camper. So this is just accessible from lifting this up. Okay, now on the left side of the bed, or right kind of depends on which way you're looking, um, you got the same two, uh, power plugs here, you know, just regular um, household wall plugs. And then up here, you actually have two USB plugs here. So you can charge your phone, charge some uh, batteries or anything like that just by plugging them into the USBs. When you see that green light, it means that it's got power, which means that your battery is good. Now on this side though, we got the um, wall outlets here, the standard 
uh, plug outlets. But then we have this here, and I believe what this is, it's a um, um, charging system for a Bluetooth speaker system that Forest River sells or has, there's something available. So they put a charger right here. So if you have that little Bluetooth speaker thing, you can charge it here. We don't have that. So this to me is worthless. I kind of wish that wasn't there. This window is your emergency exit window in standard mode or whatever. You got this all closed up. You'd take this, you'd open up the handle here, push the window out. Now that's standard right there. It's got a little catch, so it'll hold it. But if you want to use it for an emergency purpose, you just lift it up and push it the rest of the way out. And then what you would do is grab this little button here and pull it. It takes off the entire screen and then you can crawl out that window. Okay, I didn't know if I was able to show you this when I was sitting on the couch, but this here is your TV uh, mount system. I'm not sure exactly what the max size TV is that this thing will hold, you know, compared to your clearance from your slide. I probably wouldn't go much more than a 24 inch personally. If you want to try to squeeze a 30 inch in here, that's up to you. But I probably wouldn't go much more than 24. You have two outlets, standard household plug outlets. So you can plug your TV in there. This uh, right here is your antenna. So you'd be able to hook up your antenna wire through there. And there's a little button here. If you push that button, it's kind of like an antenna booster. So you can get a slightly stronger signal. Now to move your TV around, you pull this little cord down like that. And it actually unlocks the pivot right there. And then you can move this around. You can move that around. You know, so if you if we want to sit on the dinette over here and watch TV, we can. We can swing this around and put it there and we can have a better view of the TV from our bed. So yeah, just kind of whatever you want. Then you would, uh, for travel, kind of set it back up in its original position and just push it in. And then the ping automatically goes up. It's spring loaded and it will just go right into the, uh, the hole. So now it's all locked into place. All right, you might be wondering what this is. It's a speaker. Okay, so we got a speaker here. We got another speaker here. And we even have a subwoofer right here, this big black thing. So we actually have three speakers for our radio in this camper, and that's just the inside. There's another two speakers that I showed you outside already. <laughs> but uh, let me show you the radio. Okay, so this is our kitchen cupboard and the countertop is just below here. You got this one single door right here so you can put uh, a few things in here. Maybe even put a shelf up here and put more things up on top, which we might end up doing, don't know yet. But the couple of things I wanna show you here, one is the radio here. You'd uh, press and hold it to turn it on. Got a radio station. A quick push mutes it, and then a longer push actually turns it off. Um, it's got two zones. It's a zone one and zone two. One is for the inside, one is for the outside. It's got different modes. You can uh, Bluetooth it to your phone. You can listen to radios. It's got a HDMI port here along with a USB port. So, you know, if you have like a Bluetooth player or a DVD player that you want to feed over to here and plug it in, you can listen to your mu your uh, movie and stuff through the speakers in the house, in the uh, camper here. So AM, FM, multiple settings and stuff like that, different bands and yeah, that, that's pretty decent radio, it really is. Okay, so Elephant in the room, yes, we do have an air conditioner. Yes, it is not on right now because I do not have this plugged into shore power. Yes, I need to have shore power to run this. It does not run off the battery. And in fact, when they sit there and they sell you this camper, they sit there and say, oh, everything runs off the battery except, and then they list all the things that uh, do not run on the battery, which is pretty important stuff if you ask me. One is the AC. That does not run off the battery. You have to have a power 
plugged in to the camper in order to run your AC, okay? None of the wall outlets, all the wall plugs will run unless you're actually plugged into a power tower outside or a, uh, you know, shore power. I mean, that's a lot. You know, think of all the things that you might be trying to use because you got to plug it into an outlet, but you can't because you're not hooked up to a shore power. So that's a big thing right there. Is right up there, we have a microwave. All right, that will not work unless you're plugged into shore power as well. So the three things that don't work, your microwave. Oh, and the, uh, remember outside, I was telling you about that little refrigerator in the door. That also is on shore power because it uses one of the house outlets in order to run. So the little refrigerator outside, the microwave, the air conditioner, and all the household outlets around the camper. You have to be plugged in in order to use those things. And to me, that's a lot, okay? Your water heater, your furnace, even the big refrigerator down at the end and all the lights do not require shore power. You can run those off of your camper's battery. Okay, so we were talking about the kitchen before. I already showed you up here in this little cupboard, the little bit of storage here. We were just talking about the microwave here and pretty standard microwave, so nothing to really talk about there. Now, I think the faucet um, is actually a Black Label Edition feature. I don't think the standard editions have this fancy little faucet here. And then when you need to get access the sink, you just quickly pull them out. It's in two pieces. And then the uh, sink is actually a sprayer style. So you can unhook it and kind of spray around and whatnot. Hot and cold water, of course. And it's also got a uh, hand sanitizer or a soap pump or whatever you want to put into there. Nice deep sink. So you can put uh, quite a bit of dishes in here. Um, don't know how much uh, dishwashing will do in here with just a single sink. We may have to have a second tub sitting here on the uh, counter to uh, use to, as a, maybe a rinse tub, or maybe we'll do our washing in the tub and rinse in the sink. I haven't decided that yet. Put these right back. And then down here, we actually have our cook surface. Open up the glass all the way like that before you start cooking. This is not heat tempered glass, so you do not cook on it. You've got to pick it up and get it out of the way. Again, having it down like that just adds more counter space for working. Then when you're going to cook, open it up. Even if you're just doing the front burner, you open it up all the way. And this is just a two burner, one, two. That's all, that's it, that's all we have. We do not have an oven. Down below the stove is our furnace. That is the furnace control right here next to the bathroom door. And then in here is a little bit of storage, not much. You'll see the uh, cabinet has like nothing here because right behind here is that little refrigerator that we have access to outside. So that's here. And then over here is the actual furnace, the heating elements and stuff to the furnace. Now we do have a little bit of room for something here. Maybe our cooking utensils, eating utensils. Um, in here it's a little bit deeper because we have all the way down to store things. In here we don't have so much room because we got the bottom of the sink right here. Okay, so back here is our refrigerator. And yes, this is a full size refrigerator and freezer. Right now I do not have the units on, but uh, if I wanted to, I could because this refrigerator does operate on 12 volt battery power. That's awesome. <laughs> of course, when you're traveling, it has this little lock. Make sure you always move that over before you start pulling away. Otherwise these doors will pop open and all your stuff will end up all over the floor. Continuing with the kitchen, I've got two pantry doors here very good size love them they're very deep basically my whole arm length can go into those cupboards i mean i can go like that to reach the very back so yeah it takes my whole arm to reach all the way back there 
but I mean, we can use this for several things. Could be um, dry goods for cooking, um, towels and stuff like that for going to the um, beach or taking a shower or anything like that. So yeah, really, really good sized cabinets right here. Okay, now the big black door on this side goes to the big black room. That's right, the bathroom. All right, I'm standing outside the bathroom. It's a very, very small, as you can see, we've got a standard RV toilet. We got a shower, which is, the only issue is that the bottom of the shower is actually higher than the floor level. And my head is already reaching the uh, ceiling standing on the floor. So I don't think I would be able to fit in that shower standing up. But one of the cool features is this. Got a big shower head here, another shower head here, another one there, plus this little handheld wand. That is a magnificent little shower. And again, that's a black label edition thing right here. You will not get that in the standard um, 16PF edition. Now, one of the bad things we don't like, this right here is our bathroom sink. That's it. So if we want to brush our teeth or anything like that, we can use that little sink if we want to, but more than likely we'll just use the kitchen sink. Okay, we do have a power outlet in the bathroom here. So if you need to run a hair dryer or curler or anything like that, you can. It is a GFCI um, breaker. But again, there is no button on this one here. I'll show you that button here in a minute. But this was another Black Label Edition upgrade, and that is a 10-bladed fan. Okay, so underneath the kitchen cabinets, we, as you can see, we have a light here. And for these lights, all you do is push the center of them and turn them on, push it again, turn it off. They are not on a single house switch where you just flip up a switch and all the lights come on. You just turn on the lights you want throughout the camper. But here is the GFCI um, main uh, thing, and there are your reset buttons. So if any of the GFCI um, outlets stop working, you come in and you hit the reset button on that one outlet, okay? Okay, so this is our dining room. We got the big windows over here, and those windows are tinted. I don't know if I mentioned that or not. And they all have these nice pull-down shades so we do have those. Um, the table can be dropped down and the whole dining table uh, unit can be converted into a bed. You drop the table down, taking out the main post down at the bottom here and uh, putting the uh, back cushions here on top of the table and then it becomes your bed. So that's really cool. And like I said, there's a couple of lights here. Got one here, got the other one down here. When the slide out to the dining room is actually pulled in, you can still sleep on the bed. The bed can actually be laid flat. However, you do not have access to the refrigerator, the cabinet, or the bathroom over on this side of the, cab of the uh, trailer. Now on both sides are these nice, long, deep drawers that extend the whole seating area here. So yeah, lots of stuff can be put in there. And there's another drawer just like that on the other side as well. So there's two of them. And then the uh, center um, back portion of the dinette, take the cushions off, pick up a piece of plywood, and you've got more storage underneath that back section back there. So yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a lot of storage. It really is. Now the thing is, is that we need to be careful on how we load those um, drawers up so that one side's not excessively heavier than the other side because of the um, mechanism that drives the um, extension of the slide out. That slide out has to be either taken all the way in or all the way out. You cannot stop it halfway and then bring it back or stop it halfway and then extend it more. Once you start the process of sending it out, you've got to finish it. Same with bringing it back. Once you start it, you've got to finish it. You've got to bring it all the way in. There is no midpoint. 
to this uh, system that drives the slide out. That's kind of a bummer. But the slide out is battery operated. We do not have to have this unit plugged in to operate the slide out or the awning. So even the awning is battery operated. That's pretty cool. Okay, I think the very last thing I need to show you is the control panel for the camper. It is motion sensored. As you can see, the lights all turned on. Right here is a motion sensor. So you just walk by it, flip your hand by it and all the lights light up. So you got my water levels here, my battery power here, Bluetooth connection, uh, my water pump, my gas water heater. This is my electric water heater. So I can choose which one I want, you know, for boondocking or freedom camping or whatever you want to call it. Basically where we don't have electrical power services available to us, we run it on propane. So I would push that and turn the water heater on. If we have shore power, I'll use this one. And then uh, we also have exterior lights and interior awning lights. And then of course the, uh, the slide in and out again, once you start it, you don't stop. Okay, you gotta fully extend or retract the slide. That's the big thing about this. Awning, that's a completely different story, different uh, system. If we only wanna put it out the awning, maybe five feet, then that's all we need to do. And if we want it fully extended out, well then we can fully extend it out. And then of course, retract it as well. Um, these stickers here are the scan things for the uh, one, uh, what is it called, the Control One app. So you uh, download the Control One app to your phone. I think it's LCI Control One, I think is actually what it's called. Get the app and then you can pair it up to the unit via Bluetooth which is why they got the Bluetooth button there. So your phone will identify it. Okay. Then pretty much all the, all these controls are on your phone. So I can actually be outside enjoying the day saying, Oh, the sun's getting in my eyes. I want the awning out a little farther, hit my phone button. Awning goes out. <laughs> I know stupid feature, but it's there. I can use it if I want. Um, but then the, Control One app also gets your backup camera that I showed you at the back outside. You have to pair the backup camera via Wi-Fi, not Bluetooth. You have to do the Wi-Fi thing first and then put it onto the app and the um, barcode for the cameras right here. They also give you the information if you need to manually type it in. So you got the uh, insight dash blah, 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 blah. And that's your unit name or something like that. And then the long um, number run just below that is the password. It is case sensitive. So you got to make sure that if it's capitalized here, you capitalize it when you're typing it. Okay. All right, guys, so I think I gave you most of the main features to our Forest River Wolf Pup 16 PF Black Label Edition Travel Trailer Camper. It's still a lot to say. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope that you'll enjoy the videos that Jen and I will make when we're out camping in it. Now, keep in mind, guys, we are not doing this to live in our trailer over the course of so many years or for the rest of our lives. This is just a weekend getaway thing, you know, week, two weeks, maybe three tops. And that's about all we're gonna plan on doing in this camper. All right, so this is Mark saying thanks again for watching. Stay tuned next week. We'll get on a ride. I haven't decided quite yet where we're going. Um, maybe a rustic road. Maybe an iron butt ride. Maybe just another luncheon ride. Who knows? But anyway, stay tuned next week and you'll see what's coming up. After that, we're going to do a little bit of cooking. And again, I haven't decided what I want to cook yet. Well, uh, you'll just have to keep on coming back. Every week, Wednesdays, 11 a.m. Central Time. And that's when my videos go live, okay? So I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the likes, comments, and subscribing. Thanks for sharing the videos with your friends. 
Everything helps the channel. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up. If you don't like, hit the thumbs down. It still helps the channel. Even if you think you're doing something bad for the channel and thinking, ah, this guy's stupid, I don't like him, I'm gonna give him a thumbs down. <laughs> Fooled you, it actually helps. All right, this is Mark saying thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys on the road. Bye.